If you've ever heard of a fountain pen, seen one used in a movie, been given one from a relative or a friend, you've probably felt a mix of intrigue, curiosity, and intimidation when it comes to how to use this somewhat mysterious writing instrument. Well, by the time that you finish this video, it's my goal to help you understand what makes fountain pens different from other writing instruments, help you understand the basics of how to use them, and get you excited about how they can enhance your life in ways that you probably don't even realize yet. My name is Brian Goulet and I'm the co-owner of GouletPens.com. As a retailer of fountain pens, ink, and paper, I've spent the last 14 plus years diving deeper into this world and introducing others to it, which is precisely why I wanted to make this video. The way a fountain pen works is rather fascinating and elegantly simple. You have a reservoir of ink that's held inside the pen. This ink flows down through a small channel in a part inside the pen called the feed. It works off the principle of capillary action, much like how trees draw water from the ground to reach its leaves and branches. This feed delivers the ink to the metal nib, which delivers it to the paper when you touch the tip of that nib to the paper. The absorbency of the paper continues this process of capillary action, so when you're not writing, the ink stays put, ready to go in the pen. But when you're writing, the paper draws the ink through the pen continuously, until the pen is empty and you refill it. This is actually why it was originally called a fountain pen because the ink just flows continuously like a fountain. A typical fountain pen can write for dozens if not hundreds of pages before needing to be refilled and the typical bottle of ink can last a year or more. So it can be quite an economical and environmentally friendly way to write. Because of how easily fountain pen ink flows, you don't have to press down, the ink flows through it just with the weight of the pen itself. This is less work for the muscles in your hand and your wrist, which means that you won't get so tired and you can write for much longer with more control and more writing pleasure. Often those using fountain pens will find that their handwriting starts to improve just because it feels easier and it's much more of a pleasure to write, so they want to write more. Fountain pens lend themselves to cursive writing, though you certainly don't need to know cursive or calligraphy. It's just one of the many avenues to explore as you discover a whole new way of enjoying your writing experience. There are numerous options for the tip sizes of a fountain pen that can give you a wider variety of line widths than you realized were even possible. You can even get tips that are ground to unique shapes to give you a more calligraphic look without having to learn any special writing scripts. Your ink options are numerous with hundreds, even thousands of choices since fountain pen inks can be used across many different styles and makers of pens. You have the entire spectrum of ink colors, different properties such as waterproofness and even colors that can shift in varying light conditions. There's an entire world to explore with fountain pens that you probably never even realized was possible, and this is only the beginning. While the fountain pens and the ink themselves are very different, you can pretty much use it on any paper that you normally would. Though I will say the less absorbent the paper, the better the ink is gonna perform. So that's a whole other aspect to this whole writing experience that you can explore, is getting more into different types of papers, and there's really a strong relationship between how fountain pens, ink, and the paper all interact together in sort of a trifecta. Fountain pens have been around for over 150 years, and they they were revolutionary at their time, like the smartphone of the day, replacing feather quills and dip pens in the late 1800s. They dominated the portable writing instruments of the early 1900s until the convenience of the ballpoint pen displaced them in the 1950s and 60s. The ballpoint pen and subsequently the rollerball pen were convenient and able to be mass produced, so they took over as the main writing tool for most people, though not without their trade-offs. Ballpoint and rollerball pens work in a somewhat similar way to each other, using a thicker paste or gel ink that's housed inside a disposable cartridge. The friction of the ball rolling across the paper dispenses the ink that's inside the cartridge. This is certainly a convenient way to write, but it comes at a trade-off of the writing feel. We're all familiar with the scribbling to get a ball pen started, not being able to check how much ink is left in there, and needing to bear down to get it to write. Very few of these pens are what anyone would consider enjoyable to write with. It's often just a tool to get a job done with little thought given to it. You're often limited in terms of line width and your ink color choices. You basically get what you get. These are all compromises made with the ball design and we're all pretty used to it. Though you probably don't even realize just how much a fountain pen can open up the options for you. I personally thought that a gel roller ball was the ultimate writing experience until I discovered fountain pens. And I can tell you, fountain pens 
are just in a whole other league altogether. There's a whole community of fountain pen users who are all deeply passionate and enthusiastic about these writing tools. And it ranges from those you might think like authors and teachers and you know, cartoonists, but also those you might not expect so much like cattle ranchers, military personnel, first responders, students, office workers, you name it. Literally anybody who wants to have a more enjoyable and personal writing experience will appreciate what fountain pens can offer. Hopefully now you at least get how fountain pens work and why you might want to try them. It seems kind of crazy that a tool developed 150 years ago is even still relevant today at all. What I can honestly say though, is that while fountain pens are nowhere near the heyday of their mainstream use as a correspondence tool, they wouldn't still be around today if there was not an inherent value and appeal to the analog experience of putting a nib to paper. Now there is a learning curve to them and I myself had to struggle to teach myself about them when I first started but this Fountain Pen 101 series will distill all the best of what I and my team at Goulet Pens have learned over the years so that you can get to the most enjoyable benefits of writing with fountain pens with the shortest learning curve possible. This is just the first video in our Fountain Pen 101 series. In the other videos in this series, we're gonna be covering the specific parts of a pen and all the different filling mechanisms. We're gonna talk about how to clean and maintain your pens, go into lots of detail about nibs, and about how to hold and actually write with these pens. Watching through this whole 101 series should give you a rock solid foundation for getting started with fountain pens. And it's the introduction that honestly I wish I'd had when I first got into them. We also literally have thousands of other videos that we've published on fountain pens over the years on the Goulet Pens YouTube channel. So once you get through this series, you can learn as much as you could possibly want watching all of those. You can also check out our online store, gouletpens.com for a lot more pen education, as well as one of the best fountain pen, ink, and paper selections available online. We focus solely on fine writing and we have since 2009, and I think you'll enjoy what you'll find there. I really appreciate getting to share this 101 series with you, and I hope that you'll enjoy the rest of it. Thank you so much for watching and right on.